The purpose of this video is to review over specific heat problems as they relate to phase changes involving heat of vaporization and heat of fusion. In other words, how would we calculate the amount of heat lost by a certain amount of ice at a given temperature as it changes to steam at a given temperature? This type of problem would include a phase change chart and heat of vaporization, specific heat, and heat of fusion. These are the type of problems we will be reviewing over on this video. So remember that specific heat is the amount of heat energy that's needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. There are three things that determine the quantity of the heat that's lost or gained during the temperature change. The first is the nature of the matter that's changing temperature. Each substance has its own unique specific heat, so that the specific heat of water is different from the specific heat of lead, which is different from the specific heat of copper. Second thing we need to consider is the mass of the matter changing temperature. How much of it uh, is changing? Is it 10 grams? Is it 200 grams? And then thirdly, we have to consider the size of the temperature change. Are we looking at a large temperature change? Are we looking at uh, 65 to 75 degree temperature change? Are we looking at a very small temperature change of just a couple of degrees? All of this must be taken into account when calculating specific heat problems. Now, reviewing over this equation, this right here, Q, is our heat lost or gained. It is going to be uh, measured in joules, calories, kilojoules, or kilocalories, depending upon the phrasing of the problem you are given. C is the specific heat. It's typically measured in joules per gram degree Celsius or calorie per gram degree Celsius. Whichever one you use is dependent upon the phrasing of the problem. M is the mass of the substance. It's measured in grams or kilograms. And our triangle T is our change in temperature. Now it may say the change in temperature was 5 degrees, or it may give you two temperatures, such as the change in temperature was um, changed from 40 to 65, so that would be a change of 25 degrees. When you're given two temperatures, you subtract the difference between the two, and that is your change in temperature. So again, we have our formula from our previous uh, slide showing us the formula for specific heat. This is a diagram representing a phase change. Over here we have the temperature in Celsius. Now this phase change diagram is showing us moving from uh, solid uh, ice all the way up through to steam. Now right here we would have our steam, our gas phase, and this would be uh, represented as Q sub S. Right here we have our change in our state of matter where we would be going from a liquid to a gas in uh, vaporization or from a gas to a, a liquid in condensation. Now notice in our phase change we have a change in the state of matter but we do not have a change in the temperature. So uh, since we're dealing with water this phase change happens at uh, 100 degrees Celsius. Now this represents the latent heat of vaporization. The latent heat of vaporization for water is a standard. It's 540 calories per gram. Again, here we have our liquid water. And then notice right here we have a phase change where we go from uh, water to ice. So we would have our freezing. Or we could go from ice to water and we would have melting. And so this would represent our latent heat of fusion. The latent heat of fusion for water is a standard. It's 80 calories per gram. Again, we can see the solid component here. So as we're putting this together in an equation, the solid ice would be our uh, heat lost or gained would be Q sub I. Right along here, representing our heat of uh, fusion would be Q, uh, Q sub uh, F. Our liquid component would be our Q sub L. Our latent heat of vaporization would be Q sub V. 
and our gas would be Q sub S. Now that'll make a little more sense as we move through our equations and through our, our next series of problems. And what we'll do is we'll see how far in the phase change each of the, the following problems is asking us to solve for. Now before we move on to the problems, I just wanted to point out a few charts here. First off, the specific heat of each substance is different, and so you can see the specific heat of water versus the specific heat of um, ice, uh, water vapor, dry air, etc. Now, this particular chart is in joules per gram degree Celsius, and so if you are solving your problem and you're needing your answer to be in joules for the amount of heat lost or gained, then this would be the specific um, heat chart you would want to use. If, however, um, you are asked to solve for calories, this chart right here shows us the specific heat of water and ice and different substances in calories per gram degree Celsius. So the standard you use depends upon uh, what other units are present in the problem. We will be using the calories per gram degree Celsius in our future problems. The previous slide uh, spoke about the heat effusion of water as being 80 calories per gram, and I just put that standard right here for you, and that the heat of vaporization of water was 540 uh, calories per gram, and I put that standard right there for you. Now, the first problem we're going to look at is right up here. It says how much energy is needed to turn 48 kilograms of ice at negative 25 degrees Celsius into steam at 110 degrees Celsius. Well, let's first look at our phase change chart here. You'll notice that we're going to be starting off with ice, and we're going to take the ice, and then we're going to melt it, and then we're going to turn it into water, and we're going to vaporize it, and then we're going to turn it to steam. And so we're wondering how much energy is going to be needed in order to go from that solid ice all the way through these phase changes and end up at steam at 110 degrees Celsius. Now, a few things we need to remember is that right across here, when we have a phase change, we have a uh, solid changing to a liquid or a liquid changing to a solid for, for um, water, that's going to be zero degrees Celsius. And right up here, when we have um, water vaporizing or we have gas uh, going back through condensation, that's going to be 100 degrees Celsius. So we are going to use this formula right here that the, the heat lost or gained will equal our specific heat times our mass times our change in temperature. Now let's start off by looking at this area right here. This is going to be our Q sub I. And we're going to use this formula right up here, mass times specific heat times change in temperature. We need to change our mass to from um, kilograms over to grams. That's why we have this down here as 4,800 grams. Our specific heat of ice is 0.5 calories per gram degree Celsius. The reason this temperature is 25 is because we started off at negative 25 degrees Celsius and we moved all the way up to 0 degrees Celsius, which is when it started to melt. And so we've now calculated our Q sub I. We then need to calculate our heat of fusion. That's going to be this area right here where we have the melting. The formula for heat of fusion, we're going to have our mass times our heat of fusion will equal the, the heat release from heat of fusion. So I take my mass of 4800. I have a standard for heat of fusion for water as 80 calories per gram degree Celsius. I'm able to calculate my heat of fusion. Now that we have our ice melted and we have it in the liquid phase, we've got to calculate for this area right here. Again, that's going to be our Q sub uh, L, mass times specific heat times change in temperature. We have our mass of 4,800 grams. The specific heat of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. Now we're going from zero degree Celsius all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius because that's the point at which the water will vaporize. So we have a 100 degree temperature change. We're able to calculate our Q sub L. We need to calculate the heat energy associated with that vaporization. So that's going to be our vaporization energy will equal our mass times heat of vaporization. We have our mass. 
The standard heat of vaporization for water is 540 calories per gram. We've calculated that. We now have to calculate for this little area here. Now remember that we've reached 100 because that's the point at which we have vaporization going. However, our temperature continues to 110. So the difference between that will be our change in temperature in our equation. And that's why we have a 10 degree temperature change. We had 110 minus 100. We have our mass here, and then the specific heat for steam is 0.5 calories per gram degree Celsius. In order to find our complete, uh, when we come right over here, uh, energy that's needed, I'm going to have to add each of these. So we're going to take our Q sub I plus our Q sub F plus our Q sub L plus our Q sub V plus our Q sub S. Add those together and we would have the amount of heat energy needed to turn 48 uh, kilograms of ice at negative 25 degrees Celsius into steam at 110 degrees Celsius being 3.098 times 10 to the seventh calories. Now here we have our second example. We are asked to calculate how much heat is absorbed by 100 grams of ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius to become water at 20 degrees Celsius. Now let's look at that and apply that to our phase change chart. We're starting off again at, with ice, so we're going to start off at this portion of our phase change. We're going to melt the ice and then we're going to go up to our liquid component. Notice our problem does not state that any vaporization or any steam is released. Therefore, this section right here is not needed for calculating our uh, amount of heat energy. We'll start off here. It says that we have 100 grams of ice, so uh, we have it in the right units. We're starting off at negative 10 degrees Celsius, and we're moving up to 0 degrees Celsius which is the temperature that uh, the ice will melt. So we'll be using this formula. Our Q sub I would be our mass, 100 grams, times our specific heat. Uh, this is the specific heat of ice, which is 0.5 calories per gram degree Celsius. That is a standard. Our change in temperature is the 10. And therefore, we can calculate our Q sub I. Now we need to calculate our heat of fusion, which is this area here. The formula for heat of fusion is mass times heat of fusion. We have our mass of 100 grams. The heat of fusion for water is 80 calories per gram. That is a standard. We're able to calculate our Q sub F. Now we need to calculate our area right here. Now we're at 0 degrees Celsius. Our problem states that we're moving up to 20 degrees Celsius. Therefore, we have a 20 degree temperature change. We are still using this formula. So our Q sub L, we have our mass of 100 grams. Our specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram degree Celsius. Our temperature change is 20. Therefore, to get our total amount of heat that is absorbed, we would add up our Q sub I plus our Q sub F plus our Q sub L, and we would get our answer. Here we have our third and final example problem to look at. This would be a good one to pause and see how far you can get, see if you can solve the equation, and then play this out and then see if you got the correct answer. Now I know I have my uh, uh, work over here to the side, but try not to look at that and just see if you could solve it. So we're starting off with a 200 gram sample of water at 80 degrees Celsius. It's heated up to steam at 120 degrees Celsius. How much heat energy does it take? Okay, now as we look at our phase change chart, you're going to notice that we're in the water, the liquid stage. So this melting, this heat of fusion, and this ice section will not be needed to solve the problem. We're going to be starting right here at zero degrees um, Celsius, working through the liquid the vaporization, and then the steam section. So let's start off with calculating our um, heat needed for the liquid section. We'll have our Q sub L will equal our mass times specific heat times change in temperature. Our problem states that we have a 200 gram sample. Specific heat of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And then as we look at our problem, we're starting off at 80 degrees Celsius 
and we move from 80 degrees Celsius up to the point that vaporization would begin and that's 100 degrees Celsius so 100 minus 80 is where we got the 20 degrees now we've calculated our Q sub L let's look at our heat of vaporization calculations which is right here the formula is mass times heat of vaporization our mass is 200 grams the standard for heat of vaporization for water is 540 calories per gram degree Celsius we're able to calculate our Q sub V. Finally, we need to calculate for our Q sub S, which is our steam. It's going to be mass times a specific heat times change in temperature. Our mass is 200 grams. The specific heat for steam is 0.5 calories per gram degree Celsius. My problem says I'm going up, up to 120 degrees Celsius. Now notice that I'm right here at 100 degrees Celsius. That's the point that water would begin to vaporize. And then I'm going to raise up to 120. So the difference between that is 20 degrees Celsius. And so I put that um, 20 degrees Celsius right there into my equation. I solve for my Q sub S. To get my net uh, energy that's needed, I'll take my Q sub L plus my Q sub V plus my Q sub S add those up and I'll get my answer as far as how much uh, heat was required for this to occur. Finally, um, the one thing I would tell you is this chart right here, having this in front of you uh, as you solve the problems and being able to visually see how far you are moving through the chart with your sample problem will be uh, very beneficial to know how far into the equation of the QNET that you need to uh, to go. Where do you start and where do you end? So hopefully this video has helped, has made these problems a little bit easier and um, made you feel a little bit more comfortable in solving specific heat using heat of vaporization and uh, heat of fusion.